Hi, I'm Clint Wright. I'm the Broadcast Studio Managing Engineer for Communication Studies here at Longwood University, and this is the first of a series of tutorials on the Ross Carbonite Video Switcher. We're going to go over basic source selection, basic chroma key creation, and title graphic or CG pull-up. Before I really get started, i got to throw out there that like any video I'm producing, this is largely targeted at our students based off how we're using this equipment in our studio. And different studios are, of course, going to set this switcher up differently. But the good news is that even if you're not one of our students, uh, the functionality of the switcher will remain the same, so you can probably get something out of this anyway, and uh, I hope you keep watching. That being said, let's get started. When you first walk into the studio, the switcher can be a little intimidating. There's a lot of lights, a lot of buttons, a lot of stuff going on here. But for the purpose of this video, we're going to take these this whole top half and just ignore it, with the exception of these two knobs right here. They'll be important in a minute, but we'll get to that. The default program source for our switcher when it is not in use is FS2. That's our color bars. We leave that active just so that if you were to key to our IP address, you wouldn't see a blank screen. I'm going to go ahead and select camera 1 as my program source. You'll see that it lights up red to indicate that it's active, and camera 1 is now in our program window of our monitor. I'm also going to select camera 2 as our preview source. Camera 2 is now in the preview monitor and lit up white to indicate that it's keyed up but not active. To cut back and forth between them is relatively easy. You can use the cut button for a hard cut. You can use the auto transition button for a pre-timed fade or wipe. And if you want full manual control, the fade bar will give that to you. As I, switch, as I use the fade bar here, you can see the camera switching place both in the monitors and on the switcher itself. Now we're ready to build a key. To build a chroma key in the program window is relatively easy. What you would do is make sure that your program source is set to whatever you want your background to be. This is going to be the image that replaces the green. I'm going to select M1. And then I'm going to select key 1 here. Make sure that it is set to chroma. And then from this bar here, this is your key selection bar. I'm going to select camera 1. What you see is that now over here, camera 1 is indicated as the key 1 source. And if I wanted to then drop our camera 1 over key 1, what I would do is hit key 1 cut. And now you have Darth Vader over Las Vegas. Uh, a lot of times what happens is you may have to initialize your key to make sure it's clean. How you would do that is you come here to this knob right here with the key active and hit initialize. And that just cleans up your key a little bit. Now, you may have noticed that camera 1 is overlaid over both the program and preview monitors. Um, that's because of the way the carbonite layers things. If you wanted to build a key that functioned a little more independently, that is definitely possible. It just takes a few more steps. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and kill this key. And then I'm going to set it back to its default setting, just so I can show you that whole process. Let's go ahead and take camera 2 over into our program. So there are a few more steps, but it's not very difficult. You would hit background and key 1 here at the same time. And that just tells the switcher that you're building a key in the preview window. Then you hit your key 1 select. Go ahead and move it back to chroma. And then select your source as camera 1. You'll notice that without even taking the key, Darth Vader is now layered over Las Vegas. And to move him into the program, what you would do is you would use your cut, transition, or fader bar. I'm going to go ahead and come over there. And now we have a single camera in our preview and then a layered chroma key in our program. If I wanted to build a second chroma key, this is very doable. What I would do is I would hit background key 1 and key 2 at the same time. This leaves... Um, key 1 in the program, and then what I would do is I would select the background source from for my second key from the preview bus here. I'm going to use M2, and then I would hit key 2 select, chroma, and I'm going to use camera 2. And now we have a different angle of Darth Vader in front of Brock Commons. To move this over to the program, again, very simple, I can cut it, I can auto-transit, or I can use the fader bar. Now that I've shown you that, uh, one last thing I'd like to show you before I let you go is how to call up a title or nameplate. I use key 4 because it is the foremost layer. Let's go ahead and select that. 
Make sure it's set to auto select. Go ahead and change your source from black to CG. You'll see that it changes over here. And go ahead and call up your title graphic. It does appear on both monitors because I didn't go through the step of hitting the, uh, the buttons all together, but that's okay in this instance. And to kill it, you can go ahead and hit that button again. And that's kind of the basics of keying with the Carbonite switcher. So that is a super simple explanation of some of the functionality of this board. Uh, there's a lot of other really cool stuff that it can do, and we'll get into that in further tutorials. But for right now, best advice I can give you is come in the studio, start pulling up cameras, start creating keys, and just keep practicing. Thanks.